So since we understood uh, what the equation of the plane means geometrically, let's understand how to compute the distance of a point, distance of a point from a plane. Right? Because we, because we'll use stuff like this a lot when we when we learn uh, various types of models. Distance of a point from a plane. Right. So let let me just put it geometrically for you. Let's assume I have a plane pi. Right. I'm, I'm not saying how many dimensions it is. Let's assume it's an n-dimensional plane. Right. And let's assume it passes through origin. The moment you know that it passes through origin, you know that the equation of this plane is w transpose x equals to zero. Right. As we just saw. Of course, what does that mean? It means your w is a vector which is perpendicular to this plane. Right. This is a geometric interpretation of w that we just saw a while ago. Now the question is, imagine if there is a point P. A point P, of course, since it's n-dimensional space, it will have n components, P1, P2, so on, so forth, Pn. Now I want to understand what is the distance of this point from this plane, which means I'm trying to understand the shortest distance, right? Because this point, I can connect it here or anywhere. So when I say I want to find the distance of a point to a plane, I draw a perpendicular from this point to the plane and I try to see what this distance is, right? So geometrically, there's a very, very simple and elegant way of defining what this distance is. I can write that this distance is equal to, so given that P is an n-dimensional vector and W is also an n-dimensional So we do know that N, W is uh, N rows and one column right here. And we know that P is also an n-dimensional vector, right? Because here I'm doing column vectors, which is the default notation. So my D is nothing but D is W transpose P by the length of W, right? This is the equation of the distance. Now you might ask, how did you arrive at it? I will leave the proof of this as an exercise. Take it as an exercise to prove that this distance that from, from a point P to a plane is given by this equation. So the proof, please take it as an exercise. In the, in the description section of this video, we would put a reference link to a very nice, uh, uh, very nice website uh, where you can find the proof. But I strongly recommend you try to prove it geometrically. If you cannot prove it, there's, there's a very nice reading um, in, in, in the reference, reference section in the description below where you'll understand how to prove it. The reason, again, the reason I'm not proving it right now is because proofs can take much longer period of time and proofs are not critical to understanding the, the math. Of course, if you're more mathematically inclined, I strongly recommend you prove it. I'm not saying proofs are not important. All that I'm saying here, to be very frank, is that proofs are not critical to understanding the concept, right? So please take the proof uh, of the distance being equal to W transpose P by norm of, uh, by length of W as, a, as an exercise, okay? Now let's continue from here. Now you might ask, okay, this all seems good, but let's assume that my point P is in the same direction as W. So let's assume I have two points, right? Let's assume I have point P and I have a point P dash, right? Okay, so let's assume my point P, so here what am I doing? I'm doing W transpose P, which is nothing but the dot product of W and P, right, in this part. So here, I'll get a very nice idea here. So let's, let's go forward. So let's assume I have two points, a point P on one side of my plane, my point P dash on the other side of the plane. My point P dash can be written as P1 dash, P2 dash, so on, so forth, Pn dash, right? Now let's see, let's see how these two things, uh, so let's assume this is a distance D dash, just for simplicity. Now my question here is, since W is in this direction, since W is in this direction and P dash, uh, so our P is also in this direction, right? So how does vector P look like? Your vector P looks like this. Now this angle between both of them, see what this, this is nothing but your distance D is nothing but W dot P by length of W, right? If, if, if W is a norm, is a unit vector, if, if W is a unit vector, what does a unit vector mean? That length of W equals to one, then we can just discard this denominator because it's always one, right? So what does dot product mean? That if you have an angle here, now if these two have an angle like this, which is less than 90 degrees, the w dot p will be positive, right? So since w and p are on the same side of your plane, so this is your plane, right? This is your plane. This is, I can I can define this to be one side of the plane, right? I can define this to be the other side of the plane, right? A line, if you think about geometrically, separates 
your whole region, your two-dimensional space, a line separates your two-dimensional region into two regions. One region on one side of the one side of the line, the other region on the other side of the line. Similarly, a plane in three-dimensional space, right? A plane in three-dimensional space, if you look at it like this, right? If I have a plane like this, this plane separates my whole region into two regions. One region above the plane, one region below the plane. So these things are called half spaces. And your line separates a 2D, a 2D coordinate system into two half spaces. Similarly, a plane separates your, your three-dimensional uh, coordinate system into two half, half spaces. Because this is, if you look at this whole thing as a space, what a plane is doing is a plane is breaking that space into two regions, one above it and one below it. Similarly, a hyperplane creates half spaces in higher dimensional spaces. Okay, so that's what a half space means. If you take your whole area to be a space, then half space is something that you get when you when you break that whole space by any linear surface, like a line in 2D, a plane in 3D, and a hyperplane in a dimensional space. Okay. Now, having said that, now let's 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 go and understand this proof a little little in detail. Let's understand what's happening here. Okay. I'll just redraw it just for simplicity so that we can focus more on the topic here. So I have a plane pi. And let's assume this is origin and I have a vector w which is perpendicular. Let's assume I have a point p on one side in one half space and I have a point p dash in the other half space, right? Since this is origin, right? My angle between, and I know that this distance, I know that this distance here, right? Let's call it d and let's call this distance d dash, right? I know that the distance d is nothing but w dot p by length of w. I know that my distance d dash is w dot p dash by length of w. Now let's look at it, right? Since this angle is less than zero, right? Now w dot p, since w and p are in the same, are so w is pointing into this half space, into this half space, and p is also in that half space. So your w dot p will be positive. Now what about p dash, right? Let's look at it. Your w is there and your p dash is here. The angle between your w and p dash is this, right? It's greater than 90 degrees, which means when I do my w dot p dash, right? This will be negative. Because what is what is the dot product geometrically speaking? A dot product between w and p is nothing but length of w, length of p, and cos of theta, where theta is the angle between w and p. This is what geometrically it means, right? So. If your distance, so of course, what is a negative distance? It means nothing, right? Because so what we do actually when you have to compute the distance between a point and a plane is you take the absolute value of this. But the sign is extremely important because the sign tells me whether the point P is in this half space or in this half space. So given a plane, so given a plane pi, which has a normal W, assuming that it passes through origin, for all points which are in this half space, for all these points, I will get a p dot, sorry, w dot p by length of w, right? I'll get this to be a positive value. And for all the points which are in this, in this half space, right? In this half space, this half space is exactly opposite to the direction of where w is. So if you take w dot p dash by w, you will get a value which is negative, right? So if you recall, in Iris dataset, we said we can draw a line and we can say that all these points belong to one flower type and all these points belong to other flower type. Now your question is, how do I determine whether these points lie on one side or on the other side? The way we do it is using dot product. So dot product is literally the workhorse of, of uh, linear algebra in machine learning. It's used so extensively for so many things. We used it to compute angles between uh, two vectors, we're now using it to determine whether a point lies on in one half space of a plane or in the other half space. And whatever we are learning here in 2D holds to any dimensional space. So given to given given a plane pi, which is defined by a vector w, I can tell you whether a point p lies in the same direction as w or in the opposite direction. So given two points p and p dash, if w dot p or the dot product between w and p, if if it's positive, I know that W and P lie in the same half space. If the value is negative, I know that they lie in the 
uh, that the, that p dash lies in the other half space, which is which is on the other side uh, of the of the direction that w is pointing. 